Hi everyone, my name is Wayne Heath and welcome to Conversations with Clublight, a podcast about sharing my experiences as an ex-gym owner and current business owner. We're at a really exciting time where the UK fitness and wellness market is worth over £20 million. So now really is a great time to start thinking about what you can do to make things better, or even starting your own fitness business if you don't already have one. We talk about topics from retention and driving membership sales all the way through to improving processes in your club and even interviewing the occasional guests. So get yourself comfortable and let's get on with the podcast. Right, hey, so welcome to our podcast today. We're going to be talking about a bit of fun about membership software and talking about the culture about membership in general and the things that make a club gel with a membership, without a membership, and all the different options we can discuss. So I guess between the two of us, Neil, we've got a fair bit of experience, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. 20 years plus now. My God. Yeah. So our faces do look old on screen. 40 camera. next month, Wayne. 40. <laughs> oh, 40? Oh, now I feel old. <laughs> uh, obviously, from a perspective of um, a traditional gym, yeah. um, most of them always used to just take cash. Yeah, yeah. Um, did, obviously, when you had your gym, did you yep. take cash? Was that I did take cash, and I think it's an interesting point that you take cash and you think they're the benefits of taking cash sometimes, but... Cash is king. Cash is king to yeah. a point, but actually... Having the knowledge and comfort that my bills are getting paid each month, I learned quickly was actually almost more important in a way. Okay. Which is where the balance of how much cash versus how much direct debit I was taking regularly did was the success of the business, if I'm being honest with you. Because, okay. um, yeah, you can actually even try and take, and actually, it was a bit of a pain just to take the money down the bank to pay it in. No, yeah, I mean, okay. seriously, things like that. Well, security, I suppose, as well. Oh, well, yeah, you got security. Um, remembering to take it down. I was notoriously bad yeah. at actually bagging it up and walking down to RBS at the time to take the money in for the gym. Yeah, and the trust elements, I suppose, yes. of all the staff. Yeah, no, that's another point. Yeah. You know, it all, all adds up. So, uh, yeah, from a direct debit point of view, or just paying regularly, it just makes a huge difference, I think. And I suppose standing order was quite a, a common practice back then as well, which obviously dealt with the, the monthly side of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, it was putting the control in the, the members' hands. Yes. Um, was standing orders um, something that you did at the club as well? Or? I never did standing orders, okay. to be honest. I always went down the direct debit route. And I think primarily the reason why, although a couple of customers did ask to do a uh, standing order, which we denied, but... Part of the problem with the standing order, and anyone who does do standing orders out there, you most probably experiencing the same problem that I had back in the day, is that someone comes in, they fill in their standing order document, you then take it down to the bank, and when it goes to the bank, they can't read the handwriting. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. It then gets something like 10 to 14 days for the bank to send it back to the club to then verify that someone wrote the bank account number wrong. Yeah. And then you're going, well, then the members, then you try to track down the member who filled in the form wrong. Most probably you've gone, I don't know, could be nearly a month, and the customer's gone, they're not even paid you, and they've used your facilities for a month, and you've not got a bean. No, absolutely. No, certainly that can happen. Now, obviously, with the standing order side of stuff as well, is you've got to securely put their details somewhere safe as well. Yep. Um, if you're keeping copies and things, so security of that data, that yeah. personal data. So. I think now more than ever, the security data, like, I think it's a really valid point, is that you can't, you shouldn't be sitting there writing that kind of stuff down. But I suppose even with direct debits, um, it's, it wasn't that long ago that even direct debits were all done on paper mandates That's as good well. Good point. No, you're right. I'll tell you for why. I remember when we first started, we had three copies press hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was NCR paper. One copy What's for that? the member, What's one for you about? to keep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. That's all changed. I suppose from that perspective, though, again, it was the same as the standing order. You couldn't read the writing. Again, if the bank details were wrong, it was a case of it coming back. So yep. I suppose it didn't win anything over the standing order apart from it was more of a, an instruction where you'd go and take the money out. Yeah. Um, but you'd obviously use a, a company and you'd pay money for that transaction. Yes, exactly. So if obviously back in the day where, or even even now, standing orders where it was all standing orders is free potentially yeah and against the direct debit where you charge you'd be charged by a, a collection company is there a benefit for having a collection company would you say i think there is there's benefits both ways and having a collection company and actually 
having the direct debit in place makes it convenient. Yeah. I think it's, it allows you to do lots of things in the modern world that we'd all expect, Neil. You know, things like, I can join online, I can pick up my phone, I can join on my phone. Yeah. There's a level of convenience uh, that's at the, the customer's fingertips, whereas a standing order is the demise of the gym owner and a pile of bits of paper that are sat in an office that are brought out for someone to join, which is it's a bit last year. Yeah, but it also takes quite a long time as well, doesn't it? And it involves a member of staff doing it with oh, the yeah. member as well, so you've got that element of staffing costs yeah, as well. Yeah. Um, so I think online joining is becoming, would you agree, probably more popular. Definitely. Um, I think some people do online joining well. Yeah. And I think sometimes people do it not so well. Yeah, at all. Um, something obviously in my job searching around for new business and I go through people's websites and I'll look at that member journey yeah, yeah, yeah. joining and the amount of times you have to click to go yes I want to join you almost exactly. go really do I need to click again yeah um, and it's trying to keep it all nice and simple I think is quite important um, there's some clubs that want to do online joining as fast as you possibly can exactly get you signed up within seconds and they yeah. almost brag about that and then there's the other side of the coin where you want them to make it nice it's make a nice member experience. Exactly, and I think that's a good point. The member they're, experience. They're registering. They're they may be joining, but at least they've registered. So you've yeah. got some details. You've got something to work on, uh -huh. and you can nurture them then to join later on. And it so. also maybe in that process get exposed to the other services that that company can provide as well. Yeah. Like classes that they might not have even thought about doing at that point, but in the joining process they join. They suddenly think, oh. I can make book a class here, I fancy doing that. Which actually isn't a membership then, is it? So it's kind of that, yes, you're trying to get people to be a member and pay monthly, which yep. is really useful for the business and it helps obviously with cash flow. But then with the the other people that just want to maybe book a class or maybe book a bundle of classes, yeah, yeah. it's then allowing those type of people to, to come and try, mm. try before they buy, I suppose. And if they have a good experience, then they're going to become a member later. So. I think so. So it's not all about just selling memberships. No. It's about showing all the great things that they can do as. And it's the value of, of having a membership. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's the thing. You know, is having a value in a membership that allows the company to be sustainable. Yeah. Uh, and also allows the member to enjoy the services for the future. And it's not just a club that's arrived today. Thought the best idea to open up a gym was that I'll open up a gym because I enjoy working out seven days a week. Yeah. And yeah, wouldn't yeah. be a good idea to open up that business, which come across a lot and let's be fair that's not unreasonable then all of a sudden you think well, hang on a second uh, I now need to make this business pay I've got equipment to pay for in the lease mm -hmm. I've got rates to pay for I've got staff to pay for I've got rent of the business and suddenly this business becomes starts and fails within 18 months yeah because it's not based on good business sense which is why I think membership is important no, it's uh, short-sighted to think cash is yeah, so you're right, you know, cash is king to a point, but actually making sure your bills are paid are most probably a little bit more important. No, I think that cash is king motto is, is years old, isn't it? It is. And I think things have moved on so far now, and that's I hear that a lot from some of the traditional type gyms. Yeah. The cash is king, and that's probably, you know, what you've just said is hit the nail on the head. It's exactly right about making sure your overheads are covered by almost your direct debit base. Yeah, agreed. And then any other money, like your annuals, your cash you know your PT sessions and all that, all the bonuses. You're, yeah. You know, and and that's where you get all the the other benefits from. Yeah. Going back to the online joining, do you, mm. there's a lot of clubs that sometimes I do speak to where they say them their target market is the older generation, uh -huh. and the online joining potentially put them off. Um, I think it's important that clubs, it's my personal opinion, yeah. offer a choice of joining. So totally. yes, joining online on their own phone on their tablet at home at yeah. work. <laughs> instead of doing work <laughs> or they could actually be in the club with someone helping them to join and you know what I'm, that's what I was about to say that as you were going along with that part of the combo I actually generally think that's exactly what is important because yeah. I remember going back in the day you know, many respects you know, dare I say it prior to online joining being what it is today you know we were sat, sat there with a, a, a membership form with the NCR pad for the direct debit and sort of yeah. handwritten experience, but we still had that one-to-one -one experience with the customer, yeah, which I value. I think it's really important. So actually, the online journey can still be: you take the customer on a tour, they've shown the place, you've gone around the club, they want to join. The last bit is they join, but they're going to join online. So you've got a tablet with you, yeah. 
Now, there's no reason why the customer, whatever age, is going to not have a problem filling in the form on a tablet with you. It's just no different to handwriting it. You know, they know where they live. It's quite easy for them to put their own yeah, address in, right? I say with the memberships, I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of gyms want to cover all bases. They want to try and not rule anybody out. Yeah. And a funny story you told me when I first met you. Is that <laughs> how many memberships did you have at your gym? Just over a thousand. But how many memberships to choice to? Oh, the actual memberships. I was yeah. your members. Sorry, Neil. My fault. Yeah. Two. 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 Two membership plans. Was it an annual and a direct debit? Absolutely. <laughs> so, some clubs will sell so many different types of memberships. Yeah, totally right. Which is great, you know, I love the choice, but I think when it comes to the online joining part, they put so many on there mm. that the type of person that joins online with no help doesn't need that choice. They just no, want the simple. And if obviously some of the advice I give, and I've done a, a blog on our mm. website for Club Right, but uh -huh. it allows you to sort of show some of the, the things that you can do to make it so that it's just targeted at the people that yeah. are going to join online. Yeah, exactly. But then... If someone does want to come in and you want to display your presentation <laughs> yeah, with yeah. all the plans, then, yeah, yeah. then by all means do it. Um, if you have too many, I think it could have a, a negative effect. And it's interesting you pick up on that point. I'm, I mean, it, for me, it was so important to have just yeah. the two memberships because once you've done the tour, you've taken the customer around the club, at the end of it, you're saying, which way would you like to join? Yeah. And would you like to pay monthly or would you want to pay up front? It was a really simple situation and I came up with a monthly fee I think at the time we started off at 28 quid a month yeah they went up to 29 I think it maxed out at 30 by the time we, my wife and I sold the business after nine years but if I look at it as it was the monthly fee was quite easy for me to work out yeah. I looked at how many members I needed looked at my overheads divided it by that and I came up with 28 pound a month and that was it all I needed to do is get that many members to pay my bills. The bunts or the money on top became more direct debits on top, which is great, and we did get that. Yeah. But obviously, like you said earlier, well, then it became the cash customers that paid in advance. And ironically enough, the cash customers used to renew at a regular time throughout the year. Yeah. So where you had the peaks and the troughs of the year, you know, summer holidays being one, potentially uh, Christmas being another one, we would have a special offer. Yeah. on an annual membership which helped cash flow at bad the time. weather as well yeah well, and good weather yeah absolutely <laughs> it has a conversely. massive effect on your yeah, membership absolutely yeah. absolutely and it all adds to whether you have a it comes down i suppose the other question what do you think about contract or no contract what's your thoughts on that now i think again it's a, it's a great question because it's about the type of people you're targeting you know if mm. you if you're really confident with the <clears throat> the product that you have the service you give and you're confident that you can deliver that then is there a need for a contract you know yeah. do people stay because they want to not because they have to of course um sometimes people do contracts but what they do then is they almost lower their price well my argument to that would be well actually no keep the price the same yeah, yeah. and just increase your non-contract one so actually you'd yeah, never lose money point. so if your monthly price for your gym at the minute is 30 quid a month yeah then have that as your, your six month or your 12 month contract or whatever you're going to call it but then also do a non-contract one that mm. might be 35 pound a month so exactly you don't actually lose money all you're doing is you're trying to get people to almost commit to themselves i mean that, do you know what that point yeah. is so important and I've, I've been a member of a gym i don't go very regularly <laughs> you probably tell um but there's from a point of view of that is that because it's every month, I'm not tied in. I'm not thinking about the contract all the time. No. I'm not always thinking about it. Yeah. So I don't think, oh, I've got to cancel that because I'm not going. Of course. I always think, oh, I'll go soon. Well, yeah. Um, but it's definitely a great idea for, obviously, you know, if the competition are doing it as well. And you have, obviously, that clientele in there and people want to commit to that basis and they see the benefits of it. It's yeah. great, then, for you to forecast for the future. Yeah, no, definitely. definitely. 100%. No, so in terms of the overall way it seems to go, it's a bit like having, I guess, joining fees or no joining fees. I mean, I I see more and more people think working away from joining fees now. Although, I say back in the day, we had a joining fee that I think was meant to be 90 quid. 
don't think we ever charged that, to be honest. I think it was always a 50% it was always, offer off. Like a DFS but, sale. Yeah, exactly. It was always there. That <laughs> offer was always there. But we did still, despite all of that, we did always sell a joining fee, which does still surprise me when you look at the market today because it has changed, I think, yeah. joining fees. Although the monthly are payments prohibitive. are very similar. I mean, how long yeah. ago was you, Jim? I mean, how many years ago? Can you remember that far? Yeah. <laughs> well, we started in 2007 <laughs> and I sold that most probably about four years ago now. Yeah, so I'm going to say prices are very similar now. If, if anything, they've come down. Coming down, yeah. You know, and actually, you could look at the cost of running a business, you know, the cost of electricity isn't necessarily. Staff wages. Wages, you know, the national wage, all all these things are conspiring against the backbone of the British economy is small business. It, it, it's hard, you know, it's no make no bones about it, it's not easy. Uh, but the same token, you know, there's a lot to be said for companies that are concerned about the budget, Jim, yeah. that's pressurising them. My personal opinion is I don't necessarily think it does. I actually think it's a bit like having coffee shops in the high street you know I, I can think of a place which is a bit irrelevant not so far from our office in uh, Essex where there is two Costa coffees and they're split by a pedestrian crossing one's across the road from the other one of them is in an old car dealership so yep. it's a very big Costa coffee they're all busy yeah and there's independent coffee shops up and down the road so people will take choice it's supply and demand isn't it it is Absolutely. I think so and I think the budget market has proven that there's supply and demand. No, that's fair enough. Now, so with regards to memberships, though, and like I said, we, we touched on it earlier about the um, the offer of also letting people maybe just buy single sessions, so like yeah. your, your day passes, your week passes, but not just that, but maybe activities to just classes. Yeah. So more like the, the boutique-style um, businesses now that are popping up more and more. Where they're actually people are buying like a bundle of sessions or yep. buying a membership that allows them to go to so many classes, of course. and all that's kind of involved. So, yeah. Um, do you think that there's going to be an increase in that going? I forward? think so. It's all about value, isn't it? I mean, if I, I think picking up on what you're talking about with activities yeah. and classes that are going on, you could then also decide that a certain class in your list of classes is a VIP class, yeah. and actually is included in no membership option at all but the customer can still make a booking online via their app or whatever they happen to be doing. But they get they know it's a VIP class and they know they've got to pay extra by card at that time. So it's a great way of saying, well, there's my benchmark membership at what, I don't know, 28 quid a, m a month. You really want to do this certain class as a VIP level, which is 10 pound a session. Who's to say that that customer might not come back at least once a week and spend 40 quid with you? Yeah. on top of the 28 quid of all he's buying. That's the but they won't thing. think about it. It's like, you know, it's very similar with a, a shopping experience online, oh. right? you know, without naming names, but going through, buying something, and then at the end going, why don't you buy this as well? Yep. well some of the customers have bought that. And being able to tap into that kind of bolt-on, that kind of addition, exactly. it's probably easier to sell to the customers you've already got on board, yeah, huh. or you're signing up there and then and while they're in a buying experience, yep. rather than trying to get another member in. Totally. Um, and if and you can actually, that direct debit. Yeah, so it's like a, an additional monthly payment separate to their existing membership. Yeah, yeah. So they could have multiple memberships, perhaps, yep. um, for different things within the business. Um, and did you mention, I've heard you mention before that if someone was to then cancel it. That's a good point though, because I mean, if you had a typical boutique fitness, you know, you might have a person's got a membership for that allows them to access the gym bit. Yeah. Then they might have another membership, they pay an amount of money per month for spin, for example. Yeah, yeah. And another one for say hot yoga. Now there could well be a point within those three memberships that that customer thinks, oh, do you know what? I can't get home in time from work now because spinning is just at the wrong time for me. I still like my hot yoga, I still like gym. I'm actually going to drop the spin bit. Benefit of doing that is that you've still given the customer choice. They can speak to you, cancel the spin class, but they're still paying you for gym and they're still paying you for hot yoga. And it's still on the same diet debit mandate Absolutely. as well. Yeah. And so, if you think about yeah. the old way of doing things back in the day, you would have had to set it all up <laughs> manually. To cancel, get them to go and cancel their standing order. Yeah. Yeah. Get them no, to set just, it up again. Painful beyond belief. <laughs> painful beyond belief. And that's yeah. what you're trying to avoid. But at the same time, what we're, you're able to do is add value but increase your bottom line. 
even though you may have what looks like a, a lower affordable monthly payment that you're still happy to take, but you're helping the customer spend more money. Yeah, makes complete sense. Okay. So I think what we've learned from today, Neil, in our chats, I think it's what? Memberships and choice. Yeah, choice is a big thing for me, I think, is, is offering that choice to your marketplace. Yeah. Um, making that on your website to be choice. I would say when it comes to joining, would we agree that online joining is certainly the way forward? Whether it's at home on the website or yeah. in the club on a tablet, but yeah, online. Still being done on a computer yeah. without paper. Totally agree. Um, making it as easy as possible. Without if you're shadow. doing it online, so someone's doing it from home, perhaps limit the number of choices. Making it simple. Yeah. I think making it simple above all else for me was the, mo the most singly the me best decision I made because yeah. I knew where I needed to be because I had and I had a total handle on what my business cost me to run and therefore I knew where to go. So that's where membership becomes a real confidence. Yeah, and then with regards to being able to offer not just memberships but also be able to offer the fact of the single sessions or the bundles, yeah, yeah. but with an expiry date perhaps so yeah. that they don't see it as being, oh, I've bought these sessions and I can use them <laughs> the yeah. next year. They've got to use them within a period of time which actually brings more value to the membership. Yeah. So I think to add to that is that that's the invitation to treat for want of a better word. Yeah, it's the yeah. customer putting their toe in the water and say, look, I'll do that one-off session, maybe once or twice, feel a bit more comfortable with things, then go, actually, when you, the gym owner, ring them up and go, would you come along several times recently, you may as well save yourself some money and buy a membership, then you've got your direct debit. Yeah, which is even so better. I think that's ultimately the goal for every, every club. And then with the memberships themselves is to offer, I like say, a contract maybe and a, a non-contract yeah, just why not? You, know, you know but don't devalue that don't put your prices down just no. to say it's a contract totally if anything great. put the non-contract yeah, up why not you know to actually make more money totally. um, which obviously in theory then would just help um forecasting anyway makes a big difference so i think we covered a lot of great things there today cool between the two of us with some real world gym experience combined with real world experience in the payment sector and gyms and working with gym owners and literally helping gym owners grow their businesses. I think we had a good chat there and yeah. hopefully from your point of view it's been good use. Cheers, thank you. Thanks for listening. We want to help as many business owners as we can in this podcast. So remember to share it with your friends and let us know what topics you would like us to talk about next. See you next time.